So as always, welcome to the culture for today's video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about programming, uh, more specifically to powerlifting. However, it can be applied to whatever endeavor you have with your training. Uh, and how you can better critically think about the programs that you're either looking at doing or that you've currently done or, or done in the past and how you can evaluate how that program actually manipulated the variables that are in play in order to get you a desired outcome with your training. So I think there's this mis misconception around programming that certain programmings offer uh, new ways of doing things. So a few years ago, it was daily undulating periodization was the, the big thing that everyone was talking about and how you can better undulate your programming to get better results or more desired results from your training. Currently, there's a big uh, push towards RPE-based training, which as we'll go over, is not actually a periodization model. It is a way to manage the variables within your program uh, for a desired result. But as you can see, or as you'll be able to see after today's sort of discussion, that all programming is just a manipulation of the same foundational principles at the end of the day. And how you organize that uh, variation in the principles is the actual style of which the program actually is. So that would be your periodization, which is really just the organization of your training. So I've got on the whiteboard here just a few little easy ways for you to understand how better to analyze a program or your training. So I think the first thing we need to do is determine what the actual goal of your training is. So no matter who the person is, the training goal is always going to be uh, a maximization of either adaptation or optimization. I first heard this from Do Dr. Andy Galpin only a few months ago, maybe on one of the podcasts that he's recently done. Um, and I feel like this is the easiest way for, for most people to analyze their goal of their training. And that is to either maximize the adaptation of a quality that they're looking for. So whether that be maximize strength, maximize endurance, maximize muscle hypertrophy, whatever the goal is, or to maximize the optimization of one of those biomotor qualities, which we'll go over in a second. So that would be to optimize the strength that you've built and actually be able to perform or present that strength say through a peak on a competition or for somebody who's going into a bodybuilding competition to optimize their body in order to present themselves as the best package up on stage. So I think it's important to understand that the training goal should always be to either maximize the adaptation, so to actually develop the adaptation in the motor quality or to actually maximize the optimization of presenting that motor quality out to the world. So before we go into the organization of training, we need to first look at how the underlying principles of a training program and how you can manipulate those to get a desired result. So as you can see here under training principles, I've got the two biggest players in all of training programs, and that is volume and intensity. As you can see here, volume is broken into two subcategories. So one would be frequency, so how often you're actually performing a lift or a body part or uh, a lower upper split or however you're, you're organizing your training specifically in that front, so the frequency of each lift. And then also we have the sets times the reps, so the amount of actual work you're doing per body part, per movement, per muscle group, however you want to organize that sort of style of your training. So volume is the first principle that we have a lot of manipulation over in our training program. The second one is intensity, so volume and intensity. Intensity is really only just for weight training, the load on the bar. And that is either going to be a percentage-based style of training, so we're using percentages based off a, a max or a training max, or we have RPE-based training, which is uh, a bit more subjective. However, it can be a, quite an objective viewpoint as well, depending on how experienced you are with lifting and with using RPE scales. Um, so we need to understand that percentages and RPEs are just ways of gauging the intensity of the work that you're about to do with your training program. We can then see that underneath the training principles, we have the biomotor qualities. So these, for example, would be strength, power and speed, endurance, balance and flexibility or mobility. So the way in which we organize these sort of variables, these training principles will determine what sort of biomotor quality that we're trying to either adapt to or optimize for. So we can adjust these training principles in order to get a adaptation out of one of these biomotor qualities. 
So all training programs are, is a manipulation of both volume and intensity, and as a result, your loads lifted and your, freq your frequency across the week. It's very important to understand that certain programs understand this a lot better than other programs. There's a reason why 531 is a tried and true tested uh, program that a lot of people have been introduced to through their strength training career. And that is because it understands these principles and how to manage these principles together in order to get the training, at a, the training goal of strength. Um, there's also a reason why the, jug, the jugger method or the, the the juggernaut method works very well, and that is because they understand these principles and how they inter interrelate to each other and how to better organize their training program, again, to get the desired result. Again, in that sense would be muscle hypertrophy, but also strength as uh, the main goal. Once we understand what the training principles are and how they uh, interplay to get you to a desired outcome in terms of biomotor quality adaptation, we then come over to how we can actually, actually organize our, our training program. So how we can set out a 12 week program in order to, to use these variables to the best that they can be used to get the training outcome. Training organization or periodization as it's more commonly known, um, can really only be broken down into three sort of subcategories. We have linear programming, we have concurrent programming, and we have undulation in the programming. So there's sort of three categories that every single program will fit somewhere in. However, they're not really isolated in their own. There's uh, sections of all three categories in every single style of program. So a linear periodization program would literally just be moving linearly through a step-by-step -step process of trying to get one of these biomotor qualities. So for strength, we might do a five by five week one, a five by four week two, a five by three week three, a five by two week one, uh, week four, sorry, and a five by one in week five. So that would be a very linear approach to structuring your programming. We then have concurrent programming, which is a style of uh, undulation. And that is because we might now have two sort of variations, uh, two sort of variables interplaying each other throughout the weekly cycle of your lifting. So you might be doing something like a five by five for strength development and then also a five by 10 for volume uh, development. And that is two variables that we're using based off these training principles to get us to a desired result uh, down the track. We then have undulation and this is sort of similar to concurrent training but undulation is more so that you're und undulating the intensities or the volumes in a sort of per week basis. So you might go through undulation of like a strength block for week one, a volume block week two, and a uh, speed block in week three. And then you're sort of just spinning those variables as you track through the actual training program. So we can see that organizing the training is really just the manipulation of these training principles over a period of time. So that's what I've got here. Whether it's linear, concurrent, or undulation, it's progressive over a period of time. And that is really all training is. It's progressing towards your training goal over a period of time. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description box below. Uh, as always, welcome for happy to the, uh, and happy lifting.